Hello, my name's Alan Rim Kaufman of the Rim Kaufman Group. We're an online marketing agency focusing on large scale pay per click paid search as well as web effectiveness optimization and site testing. Today I'm going to share an application we've developed that we find pretty useful called RKG Duck. It is a filter that goes into the Windows clipboard process. It's a Windows only application. You start it up by opening the duck, a uh, little icon, and this window pops up with a bunch of different filters. Uh, here's a pretty simple filter that will simply uppercase anything in the Windows clipboard. So if I opened up any Windows application, let's see, here is uh, the Abbott and Costello who's on first routine. If I highlight some data and type control C to copy it to the Windows clipboard. If I turn on the filter, then when I paste it, it will be in uppercase. Not not too amazing. I can control Z, Windows undo. I could just as easily turn on the lowercase filter and then when I do control C to cut and control V to paste, it's in lowercase. Again, I'll do control C to undo and you can do, you know, more complicated filters like, I don't know, here's pig latin. So control C, control V and now uh, who's on first with Abbott and Costello's in Pig Latin. Not not terribly useful. The interesting thing here is that this works in any application. So here's a piece of PowerPoint, some information about Abraham Lincoln, and again, able to uh, make that go into Pig Latin as well as should we want. Uh, you can also use it for functions that might not be as convenient. So going back to the Excel spreadsheet, here's some uh, data uh, no, let's go to the second tab. Here we go. And one of the filters here is called comma join, and it basically takes columns of data and joins them together, uh, comma splices them. Maybe you need to put them in a database or something. So if I were to copy these, again, we see we're copying a multi-column space, and with this filter on, when I paste it, uh, I'll get a comma spliced result. So I can go from one many columns down to one column. Uh, I can also go from one column to many columns. So let's close down that sheet. What other filters are of interest? Uh, here's one that extracts URLs from a document. So if I had a document, uh, here's some ipso lorem text, and let's say uh, there are a couple URLs scattered amongst this document hidden in there. I can turn on this filter called extract URLs. I can say control all Control A, Control C, and I could paste it back into Word or I can paste it into any Windows application. How about Notepad? And there it just pulled out uh, the URLs that were in that document. That's pretty pretty nifty. Uh, let's say I had a, uh, a URL up. Let's close this ipso lorem. And here's an Amazon page. Here's an Amazon page for Harry Potter. And obviously if I view source there's going to be a lot of URLs here. Amazon starts with a big white space, but here's all their CSS and their JavaScript, and then down into the page you can see there's obviously lots of URLs in the source. So Control A to select it all, Control C, I'll bring up another uh, notepad, Control V, here are all the URLs that were extracted from that document. Kind of, kind of interesting. Again, I could just as easily have opened up uh, any document if I'm back here on the PowerPoint, I need to do a undo, uh, I could highlight the text here, control C, and that will extract the URLs. Let's put them into our, let's put them into our, uh, put them into our Excel spreadsheet. So what it, that, what that filter did was from the copy buffer, found all the URLs and pasted them, pasted them into any, from any Windows app to any Windows app. Let's go back to this list of URLs. Uh, moving towards paid and natural search. We do a lot with URLs and a lot with URL parameters. Here's another filter, uh, this filter here. Get this back up. There's a filter here called uh, extract parameters or parameter URL parameters. And what this does is look through a bunch of URLs and pulls out parameters. In this case, I wanted to pull out the QID and the REF. You could have as many GCLID or uh, SRC or MMVITE, whatever parameters in URL you want to extract from a list of URLs. So let's uh, 
highlight this again and pull up Excel as a handy tool and uh, we'll blank out the sheet and we'll just do a regular paste. Again, the filter's off. So we'll, oops, wanted to put in a row, not a column. So this first thing is the URL. This second column will be the, uh, we set this up to be the QID, QID and the REF. So if I were to highlight these data with a control C, okay, we'll turn on that filter. We can select the data, control C, and then we will jump back to the top and paste it. And what will have come out is the QIDs. To see this, if we uh, sort the data by the QID, you can see that it was able to pull those parameters right out of the URL. The reason we had to sort it was because a lot of the uh, URLs, turn off the filter, a lot of the URLs here were actually images, like all these at the top, and so they didn't have the QID and REF, and so those, uh, those sort down to the bottom. So that lets us extract URLs. Uh, what else could we, could we do? Let's say that we wanted to find and extract other data from a file. Uh, let's open up a eBay page and this is a consumer electronics auction listing page for eBay. There's obviously a lot of SKUs on the page. Maybe we want to pull out uh, item numbers, SKUs to try and optimize paid search or natural search for those. They're often pretty effective. So let's uh, copy the data here, control all, control C, control A, control C, and we'll turn on the ext pardon me, we'll turn on the extract SKU, which is basically numbers and letters in the same word. And how about we paste that into Notepad? We could paste it anywhere, and you can see that it, from that document it ripped out all the things that look like SKUs, letters and numbers in the same words, either a letter followed by some numbers or some numbers followed by a letter. That might be interesting. Uh, what other kind of transformations could you do? Let's say that you're interested in putting code in an HTML doc. Uh, let's see, here is here is a very, very simple HTML page with a code block, and here is the page displayed. If we just took some code and put that on the page, uh, the the greater than and less than signs, we'll save that, would be rendered uh, as HTML, and so you get kind of garbage. The code gets mangled because of the it's it's not understanding uh, the the entities haven't been encoded. So instead, let's go back to this HTML source and remove that code because we need to encode it before we can use it. Let's go back to RKG Duck and we can go to the HTML encode. Strangely enough, we're going to actually encode the program itself. So I'll type Control C and I'll turn on the filter. And now when I paste it, I'll get code that's all marked up nicely with the ampersands and the greater than signs encoded. So when I save this and render the page, uh, I get a nice HTML page that's properly formatted. That's the end of this first video. In the second video, we'll cover some advanced topics. And thank you for listening.